Pamuhay, ako po si Debra Garcia. Hi, I'm Debra Garcia, and welcome to another lesson where you will learn practical Filipino language in just a few minutes. This is brought to us by NEC TV, the local TV channel here in Nipua, Manitoba. We would love to hear your thoughts about our video, so if you have some comments or suggestions, please write them below or you can send them directly to NACTV at wcgway.ca. Also, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and please like and share this video. Today we are going to learn another set of vocabulary words. Actually, these are basic vocabulary words that I forgot to teach you in the past lesson. So these are the parts of the body in Filipino. Parts of the body is mga bahagi ng katawan. So I somehow forgot about this, but today I'm going to teach it to you. And then we are going to study some sentences as well with the patterns that we've learned from the previous lesson. And then I'm going to teach you one nursery rhyme about some parts of the body. Okay, so from the picture there, We'll start with the head first. We'll go to the lower part of the body later. So the first one is head. The head is ulo. Okay. Oh, by the way, I forgot the entire picture of it. So the face is mukha. Face is mukha. I forgot. Okay. So head, ulo, face, mukha. Hair is buhok. Eyes, mata. So plural, if you want to be specific in Filipino, we say mga mata. But when we say mata, it's understood that there are two eyes. Okay, so we, you can say mga mata or mata. It's, it's accepted. So eyes. Same with eyebrows. Well, we... I never heard someone who said mga kilay. If we want to compliment someone's Eyebrows, for example, it's perfect. So you say, your eyebrows, ang, ang kilay mo ay maganda, or ang ganda ng kilay mo. We don't say, ang ganda ng mga kilay mo. We don't put mga, okay, to indicate plural, because it is understood that when we are talking about eyebrows, there should be two of them. If you only have one eyebrow, then you need to draw another one, okay? So, eyebrows, kilay, ears, tainga. We spell it like this. This is the original or formal spelling of ears, tainga. But when we say it, when we pronounce it, or sometimes when we write it down, we spell it like this. It's like tenga. T-E-N-G-A. Yeah. So tenga or tainga. Nose, ilong. Mouth is bibig. Tongue, dila. Teeth, nipin, and then neck is leeg. Now let's go to the middle part of the body. We'll start with the shoulders because we stopped with leeg in the previous one, right? In the previous slide. So we'll start with shoulders. Shoulders is balikat. We, we don't really say manga balikat. We all just say balikat. Chest is didib. Arms. Arms is brazo. Hands. Oh, by the way, for arms and hands and fingers and nails, we use plural. So we say mga. Okay? So for arms, it's mga brazo. Hands. Mga kamay. Okay? Fingers. Mga daliri. Nails is mga kuko. Okay, stomach is tian. We can say tian or we can contract it. We say chan. It would sound like, so it would be like this, T-Y-A-N, chan, but then we don't spell it like this. We always spell it with the I. So stomach is tian or chan when you say it. Navel is pusol. Or maybe I should include the heart. The heart? is puso, one of the most um, popularly used term in the Philippines. So, we, we, though we say hard, but when you say puso, it's, it's very common. 
By the way, that's one reason as well why I'm teaching you the body parts, though this seems easy. It's because um, the, the body parts, the Filipino term for the body parts are commonly used in the Philippines. If you notice in the past lessons when I give you some vocabulary words, I would always say, ah, never mind the Filipino term because actually the English version is more popular. But with the parts of the body, um, except with the internal organs, okay, but for just the normal parts of the, the outer part of the body, we use the Filipino terms or Filipino words for those, not the English. Though we are very much familiar with the English terms as well. Okay, so heart, I'm gonna include heart, and that's puso. Heart is puso. Liver, it's very common too, so liver. We call it atay. Okay? Uh, intestines. Intestines is bituka. Mm, it won't fit. So I'm just going to write it down here. Bituka. It's intestine. Intestines. Okay? Now let's go to the lower portion of the body. Let's start with the hips. The hips. Um, we we don't say the plural of hips. We just say balakam. We don't say mga balakam. Okay? D just balakam. And then thighs are hita or mga hita. Knees is tuhod or mga tuhod. Oh, by the way, I did not include the waist. The waist is bewang. We spell it like this. It's, it's baiwang the formal spelling, but when we say it, or even when we write it, we write it like it's bewang. The waist, okay, the waist. I forgot about that. So knees, tuhod, legs, binti or mga binti, feet is paa, heels is sakong, toes, we just call it like the finger, so mga daliri. But we say mga daliri ng paa. Only the big toes um, have the term. So for the big toes, we call it hinlalaki. So for toes, we say daliri or mga daliri ng paa. Daliri ng paa. So fingers of the feet. So mga daliri ng paa. So for the big toes, though, I'll put big toes. We say hin lalaki. Okay? Hin lalaki. Laki means big. So maybe it's it's where we got it. So hin lalaki is the big toes. Okay? So did I miss anything? Oh by the way, what do you call the the undersurface of the feet? Oh my god, I don't know what's what is that in English? So maybe soul? Correct me if I'm wrong, okay? Maybe soul. <laughs> Maybe that. So in Filipino, we call it talampakan. There you go. I think that's everything. So we have nails as well in the daliri ng mga paa. So it's the same. It's kuko. Those are nails. All right. Now let's go to some sentences. In the past lessons, we've been writing our sentences in English. Um, translating them to formal Filipino and then conversational Filipino. But today, let us try translating it from English to conversational Filipino because that is supposed to be our goal. We need to know how to say it, okay? So, let's start with this sentence. Uh, don't worry, I'm just going to give you very short sentences, simple sentences. For example, I would say, Jane's hair is Shiny. Okay, so in this sentence, we need to see if the pattern is in SVO, SVA, or is it SV adverb, or is it SV um, noun, because those are the four patterns that we've studied so far. So Jane's hair is our what? This is our S, right? This is our subject. Is is a linking verb, and there is no other verb that's in there, so it just is. 
This will be our verb. Shiny, what is shiny? Adjective, right? So this is an SVA pattern. I already discussed about this in the past lesson. So Jane's hair is shiny. And then when we are going to translate this in formal Filipino, it will be in the same pattern. So we are not going to do that right now. We will go directly to the conversational Filipino. So if you can still remember, if your pattern is SBA, when you translate it to conversational Filipino, we always start with the verb, right? So V, S, A. However, I also mentioned to you that if if there is no main verb and only linking verb is here, then we cannot start our sentence with a linking verb. Um, aside from that, in conversational Filipino, we do not use linking verbs. So if there are any linking verb in the main sentence, for example, we are removing it because in conversational Filipino, linking verb is not welcome. Okay, so in this one, you would have a clue that this V here will be omitted. So now you only have two things to translate, this one and this one. Which one will go first? In, in um, formal Filipino, in this pattern, we always focus our sentence with a subject. But in conversational Filipino, it should be this, right? So if it's not this, then it would be this. So you are going to start your sentence with your adjective. Shiny in Filipino, hair is shiny. Shiny in Filipino is makintab, right? So you are going to start then your sentence with makintab. That's how we say it in conversational Filipino. So we say makintab. Makinta. So it's there already. This is done. How are you going to translate this in Filipino? I just mentioned it, I think, in the past, no, in the other lesson before this one. Uh, Jane's hair, since in Filipino we do not use apostrophe S when we want to show um, possession. So we are going to translate this as J Buhok. Hair is Buhok. Buhok ni. Jane. So, buhok ni Jane. Makintab ang hair is buhok. Buhok ni Jane. See? This is very easy. So, we just translated this and then this one. Shiny is makintab. This is our adjective. Ang buhok ni Jane means Jane's hair. And this is our subject. We don't have verb anymore. So, we'll just say makintab. That's our conversational Filipino. I'll give you another sentence. How about this one? So the doctor checked the kid's teeth. Okay, this is a bit long, but don't worry, this is very easy. So, we need to see what is our pattern first, okay? The doctor is our subject. Checked. Checked is our verb. Now we have the main verb. And then the kid's teeth is our object. So, this is an SVO pattern. Uh, to translate this in formal Filipino again, it will be in the same pattern, SVO. But then, in conversational Filipino, it would be very easy. So SVO, when you want to convert it to con conversational Filipino, you should start with the V, not with the S, right? So SVO will become VSO. So then we'll start with the V, checked. Checked in Filipino is, in, it, this is in past tense. So check is suri. Um, past tense, sinuri. Okay, so we'll start with sinuri. Sinuri. And then we'll go to our S. So this is done. We are going to put this one here. Sinuri nang. Doctor is doctor. Okay, it's the same. Now, 
Why did this become nam and not the da? It cannot become an article anymore. Nam, I mentioned this in the previous in my previous lessons that nam is like a marker. It it functions like a preposition of, but then but in Filipino we do, we do say we don't say sinui nam doctor. Check the doctor. We don't say if we are going to copy this. If we say sinui ang doctor, then the doctor is the one that got checked. But in the sentence, the doctor was the one who checked. So this one functions like a preposition, like by the doctor. So check by the doctor. So sinui ng doctor. So we're done with this. The kid's teeth. Teeth is what? Nipit. I mentioned it earlier, right? Kids, I always also use this word as a subject in my previous sentences. So, kids is bata. So, sinuri ng doktor. Now, there is an article here. Da. We are going to copy this. Ang nipit is teeth. Nipit ng and then bata. So what happened here? We copied the ang. Kids' teeth. Remember in the previous sentence, Jane's hair became buhok ni Jane. Right? We we put this one ni. This one is only being used if the the following word is a name. But this one is a common name. Kids' name. Kids' teeth. So it will become. Nipin nang bata. We don't use nipin ni bata here because bata is not a proper name. It's not a proper noun. So we are we are going to replace it with the nang again. It's some like it's somehow like a connector, but then sometimes it functions as preposition. So in this translation, we say sinui nang doktor ang nipin nang bata. Sinui we started with the verb. Doctor is still our subject or the doer of the action. Nipi ng bata is still our object. So SBO became VSO in conversational Filipina. Alright, so as I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna teach you a nursery rhyme. It's very popular in the Philippines about some of the body parts. So it's, it goes like this. Sampung mga daliri kamay at paa Dalawang tenga, dalawang mata, ilong na maganda Malinis na ngipin, masarap kumain Di lang maliit, nagsasabing huwag kang magsinungaling Alright, so we teach our kids this song Especially when they're still in the nursery in, in nursery. So, we studied numbers before, right? So, maybe you're familiar with this one, Sampu What's Sampu? And we have dalawa here. So sampu is ten. What is daliri again? Fingers, right? So sampung mga daliri. Do you have an idea? Ten fingers. Mga is plural, right? So daliri. So it is ten fingers. Kamay. What is kamay? You forgot? Hand. Paa is feet. So it's saying that there are 10 fingers on hands and also in the feet. So, sampung mga daliri, kamay at paa. And then, dalawa means two. Dalawang tenga. Tenga is ears. We also have dalawang mata. Mata is eyes, right? Now we use connectors here. Remember when we studied the numbers, we don't say dalawa tenga, dalawa mata. We always put connectors to connect these number and the the other word. So dalawang tenga, dalawang mata, and then we have ilong. What is ilong? Nose. Ilong na maganda. What is maganda? Beautiful. Beautiful nose. So we, we have Ten fingers, hands and feet, two ears, two eyes, and we have a nose, a beautiful nose. Okay, ilong na maganda. Malinis. You can still, do you still remember what malinis is? Malinis means clean. Clean. Nipin. What is nipin again? 
teeth. Clean teeth. Masarap. What is masarap? Delicious. Kumain is in past tense. Kain means eat. Kumain is in past tense. So, what does it say here? Malinis ng ipin. Masarap kumain. It, it, just, it is just suggesting that when your teeth are clean, you can, you can feel that the food is delicious. Okay? Masarap kumain. Dila. What is dila again? Tongue. Right? Dilang maliit. Maliit is small. Dilang maliit. Nagsasabi. This is the original word. Nagsasabi. We just put a connector here. Sabe means say. So, the tongue, the small tongue is saying. Nagsasabi is in present tense. Present continuous. So, the small tongue is saying. Huwag. Huwag means don't. Ka means you. Don't you? Magsinungaling means tell a lie. Do not. So it's talking to you. Do not tell a lie or don't lie. Alright, so do you think this is a nice nursery rhyme? It somehow covers a lot of body parts and then it would give you some of the you know, new vocabulary words too. So if you want this, this is a very popular nursery rhyme in the Philippines that you, when you sing this, uh, people would, even the kids would really understand what you're talking about. All right? And that would be all. I hope you enjoyed our lesson for today. Uh, please don't forget to put in your comments and suggestions. If you have any, you can write them below or you can send them directly to nactv at wcgwave.ca. Also, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And please like and share this video. See you again next week. Bye!